Okay, so what are my thoughts on this recent Synod on the Family? Today we're going to talk about the Synod of the Family in this recent document that everyone's calling the Relatio. And I'll give you a Catholic take on homosexual identity within the Catholic Church all the way back from the writings of St. Paul. Yes, there were people who had homosexual experiences in the first century. Some of them became Christians. St. Paul writes about them. We'll take a look at that later on in this video. But first of all, I just want to say, you know, there's cardinals going around saying all kinds of crazy things. And yes, that has happened for many centuries. Cardinals, as you know, are not always on the up and up. So just think about it. You know, some of the some of history's worst cardinals include Cardinal Rodrigo Borgia. This was a cardinal who had mistresses. He had several children. He called all these children his nieces and nephews. And he became pope. And when he became pope, he declared all of his children as legitimate. Um, there's also Cardinal Lorenzo de' Medici, a uh, famous cardinal from Three Musketeers, Cardinal Richelieu, who was probably not the exemplar of piety, and then perhaps the worst cardinal of all time, St. Louis Cardinal Ozzy Canseco. But seriously, you don't need to stress out and lose your peace over what these cardinals and bishops are doing and saying, even if it's just the most outrageous and silly things. Forget about it. Move on. We have the teachings of Christ. We have the New Testament, the Old Testament, we have the catechisms, we have all of these safeguards. The one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church isn't going to contradict the express teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this extra, extraordinary synod on the family is a synod that happens every two to five years in the Catholic Church, and it usually ends with a papal exhortation or as a conclusion. And this relatio that just came out is just a report. In fact, in Latin, relatio means report. It has nothing to do with relations or anything like that. It's just a report on what these bishops have been talking about. It has zero magisterial significance. Now, St. Paul, uh, writing in the first century, talks about the presence of homosexuals or those who have had homosexual activity or experiences in the early church. And we're going to read a passage here from 1 Corinthians because he talks about them being in the church of Corinth. And then we're going to make an application of how it can apply to what seems like a bunch of chaos in the Catholic Church today. St. Paul writes these words in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Quote, Do not be deceived, neither the immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor robbers will inherit the kingdom of God. In such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the Spirit of our God. End quote. So what St. Paul says here is he talks about drunkards, he talks about adulterers, murderers, thieves, and homosexuals. He said, such were you. A past tense reality. Because the present tense for the Christian living in today is a new identity in Jesus Christ. St. Paul says the old man of Adam has been cast out and we are new creatures. We have the new Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ, living in us and giving us supernatural grace and supernatural power. So this is the real pastoral answer to these questions about the family, divorce, and homosexuality. Is Do we really believe in a supernatural solution that comes from Jesus Christ? That he is the Alpha and the Omega and he can solve these problems for us on a pastoral level? level of spiritual direction through the sacraments and faith and hope and charity? Do we really believe that? And if we do, we don't need to be alarmed by all the media sensationalism. You know, CNN, Fox News, the bloggers, the commentators, they want you to get worked up. They want you to be confused and upset because that's how they make money, right? That's how they extend their empire. And Satan wants you to be discouraged, defeated, and in a state of confusion and chaos. But our Lord Jesus Christ wants you to be encouraged and victorious and filled with the peace that only he can give you, the supernatural peace. So let's make sure that the enemy doesn't win on this one. Hey, thanks for watching. And remember, our Lord Jesus Christ said that you are the light of the world and the salt of the earth. So go out there and be salty.